Hello, Milton. Continue uh, this morning uh, uh, delving further into um, uh, the central central core uh, of this uh, uh, this new this new self life we live. This new being life we live. Uh, which is the uh, uh, what we put under the term of, of uh, intercession, intercession, of intercessor. Um, before I forget it, um, some of you have been uh, along with um, uh, Betty Ketchum. Uh, God's given Betty uh, an unusual method of uh, illustrating what we're talking about. Uh, through the terms of the uh, Don Quixote book, uh, which uh, in very marvellous ways, by form of illustration, opens up what we're saying in general, general uh, um, Bible truth here. And so she continues, so if any of you want to f go further or go first time and hear her, she's on and wherever she is, I don't know, one thirty. she meets somewhere. I just mentioned that in case some of you didn't know that this happens each day. Yes, did you? Uh, several people have asked to have a marriage. Um, uh, there hasn't been much uh, uh, inter-discussion as far as these mornings are concerned. Uh, you always understand we're a fellowship at any time anyone would like to uh, pop in something or we're, we're that's all right. My interpreter can interpret you to me what you're saying. So. <laughs> And so you feel quite free to do so. And we do aim at further times as you want them, when we can interchange. We had quite a strong interchange, some of us, eight or ten of us, fifteen of us, yesterday, uh, on the question of the spiritual life. We're going to take it up later on. So uh, uh, we're free in that way for any interchange which will help us to uh, um, uh, get the teaching of the Spirit and the conservation of spirit and the kind of things we're talking about. Now you uh, remember that we're, we've um, settled in uh, to our uh, what we call third level uh, and we went into some uh, details, of, uh, preliminary details about that yesterday um, understanding that the whole uh, nature of God is others. He, 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 his life is fulfilled in fulfilling the life of those he's wanting to be. He's, he's the, 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 the God of outpoured love, uh, love action. Um, therefore, when that person is in us, he can only be that in us. Uh, therefore, the, the preliminary periods we've been through of this between the young men are to get, the, to get the, the human self into focus that I can be uh, an other lover self. I can find my, what my, 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 my true self is when it's been delivered from the false spirit which expresses itself through us, the Satan spirit, and been replaced by the true spirit, the spirit of God expressing himself to us, through us, but in such a way that we're the expressors. So we've come back as full, free people. Uh, so in this, in this, this marvelous relationship which God's made humans, so humans are in the foreground, they're really expressing the one who's, who, who, who operates them. Uh, but it appears to be they doing it, it is we doing it, yet it isn't really we doing it, it's the spirit of the, the, that, that expresses himself by us, uh, who, who's the, the doer uh, uh, as we do it. You would never get beyond the sort of confusion of terms like that which Paul had to put when he had to say, I live, yet I, yet I don't live. He had a contradiction with himself. I live, yet I don't live, Christ is in me. Then the life I now live, he put me, come back again like that. And so uh, it, when we're in the spirit, we understand interrelation. When we're out of the spirit, it seems like confusion or blasphemy or something else. Um, and so we've seen that uh, uh, when this, this has been uh, finally settled into us by the word and by the revelation of the spirit 
that we are our real selves, and that that real self is actually God, God expressing by our human self, then we recognize it, it, its form must take a, a total absorption in outgoing love. Because that's all he is. He's totally absorbed in, in perfecting everybody. All the human received what they be. Uh, and in ultimately the whole Christian being perfected. The, the, uh, um, so a whole being is out from himself uh, perfecting those whom he brought into being that they might have an eternal perfection. Uh, therefore, uh, uh, we now recognize this tremendous fact that is our soul drive. That's what we, we saw yesterday, our, 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 God, our soul drive. To say it's God only means a God of other love is only. The, the God of only, uh, God only is a God of other love. We start by speaking, he's God, my God, I have to start there. I have to find this marvel. I, I'm not I, I'm this person expressing his completion by me. I have to thrill, I have to thrill through, be thrilled through those earlier stages of the new birth even, and then the, the replacement level. So temporary it seems if the, the light of God is that uh, uh, he's my God and I'm his. But then we drop that, we drop that off as old clothes as it were. Um, that just becomes a permanent reality. We haven't re uh, uh, like, like in a marriage, you don't go on telling your husband or wife you love each other, you just do. <laughs> and because it's the background basis of life. Uh, and um, so we, with God, you see, we haven't got to keep getting relationships. That's why in a sense we don't worship maybe some of you might, might expect us to. We're always worshipping. There are times where it's good to set apart to worship, but the whole stream of life is the marvel of this, of this relationship. Uh, this one is as, a, as, as identify himself with us and he with, we with him and so on and so on. So that's, that's our kind of uh, background, a commonplace love relationship, which is always there. Uh, uh, and uh, so, um, uh, um, leaving, that, leaving that behind as our basis in, our, in, the, in the second level, we begin to settle in to another another concept, obsession that, that, that my life as his life has no meaning except in relation to the way he comes out to, by me to others there's nothing else the only meaning of life is by some I'm, I'm, I'm a part contributor in the body of, in the body of Christ how about, by which he comes out and repeats himself in others and is in, in, in and fulfills himself as, as being their fulfillment even as he fulfilled with us in being our fulfillment And we said, that takes some settling into. Uh, each realm gets some settling into. This, uh, this, uh, the concept, you're not you, but you're he, and then you are you. <laughs> that takes some settling into. I said, it's at your ease in it. So it may be, it needs some settling into uh, this other radical concept. That the, there's no, that this, uh, uh, the whole meaning of our relationship is out from us in, in relation to uh, into relation to his, 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 his world purposes. His world purposes are, of course, to repeat himself in millions. To have millions of walking Christs, right, by whom the world, will, will, by whom we, he ultimately develop whatever he has in purpose in, in the whole universe. Uh, so I have to keep repeating that. Uh, there's a, 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 a repetition of, uh, inner, of uh, inner consciousness here, of inner revelation. From the, rep from the re revelation of new birth, the revelation of replacement or unification, the re revelation that, that, that this life means nothing except it's related to his purposes by me in the perfection of others, fulfillment of others. Because, um, of course, when that, as, 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 as that sinks into us, it, it affects our outlook on our daily lives, everything. Because our life, their life become geared to another purpose. This one purpose. So this becomes the meaning to us of God only. The, the, me, the, third, the third recognition of God only is a God, of, God, God for others only. Therefore I'm for others only. Say, so I'm, I'm for the God means I'm for the God for others. Therefore if God's for others, I'm for others. And that's all I am. And others mean that by some means I have some, some share 
in uh, this repetition taking place in humanity. Oh, who I am, I'm Christ in me. Oh, that's who I really am. I'm Christ, I'm a former Christ, that's what I really am. Because that's the ultimate, uh, uh, that's of course can satisfy the heart of God, repeats himself in his, in his whole human family. Um, this is the, the, uh, the, uh, per the perfection of his, his present purposes. The uh, uh, completion of the, of the body, who are all walking Christ, and then through the body you're going to manage his universe. That we don't know much about yet. We already know we're heir to his universe, therefore he's going to manage his universe by, by uh, himself in his, in his multiple human forms. And those, uh, only, uh, those are only multiple human forms when they are the love forms, when their basis will be to, to f fulfill the needs of those whom, to, to hope for, for whom they become responsible. Just as God's only meaning is to fulfill his, his needs by, 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 by uh, he, that his life is fulfilling our needs. We saw that uh, that starting with a trickle, which becomes this, this flood of the, of the third level, the trickle is, if your body age couldn't help wanting somebody else to know, you began to be another lover. You couldn't help, oh, I, I want other people to know this is eternal life. This drive, this Holy Spirit drive began to get you. So you began to be an intercessor, and began to be a third level outgoer, from the moment you are born again, because it's a, of course it's the same person in you. The, the, the saviour who saves you is the outgoing saviour uh, who, uh, who expresses himself by you who's the same person that's why we say the level is only a, a large understanding of who he is and who you are as a consequence the only a large understanding of who he is and who you are as a consequence on these on the, 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 the three levels um, and so we go on in, uh, with the increase uh, of that uh, um, uh, enlarged absorption the, the, the thrill of our lives when we've, when we've had some relationship like we had uh, our friend Richard yesterday saying oh I talk with oh I see when, when, when at uh, 2.30 talk a.m. with the mother lorry uh, <laughs> oh I see how I am that's the thrill of life it's the Holy Ghost does it Holy Ghost does it but we're we're, we're in a amazing, amazing grace our, our, our selfhood is made the agency by the which Holy Ghost rings his bell, turns his light on. And um, it may not, uh, we haven't discussed that yet, it may not always mean a direct person to person, it may be your part of what, uh, by which it's done. You, you may be the background person by which it happens. Uh, what happened here, there's a background in the kitchen. Uh, so there's that background which is part of the whole thing, the whole body works, well, the whole body works as one, you can't have one there without the others. The whole thing works together. So actually, when the Holy Spirit goes to something by one person to another, it's really, of course, it's a, all, all sorts of people have been involved in that, in that, that, that fulfillment. Uh, what we might call background for background person. We recognize that, of course. So it doesn't necessarily mean you are directly or as a one-to-one -one person is happening, but you found yourself in, in some senses, we talk about it, uh, 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 a part of that of that fulfilment of that purpose in some senses which we're talking about we're talking about intercession then we saw uh, that that had meant that does mean that you've accepted as a fact uh, the spirit has, has, has worked in your detachment so that God only means really you only have him you only have him something's happened to you there's been the flight of the alone to the alone Someone has been a cornering of you until, until uh, the other things have to be uh, uh, dropped out and cut off and, uh, uh, until this happens. Uh, of course, the, the kind of joke or uh, paradox in the thing is when you, are alone, when you have him only, you have everybody. When you have him only, you have everybody because everybody's a part of him. But you don't find it that with the everybody first. You find it with the first, him, him first and everybody fits in. So they, you get back in the right way a new form of love for your father and your mother and your wife and your children. It's the real love because it's a serving love. It's a love the best for them now. It doesn't always look like they may not think, always think it so. Some of the old self, self heat of, of, of the love may have gone off in some senses. A new quality of love is, is God's love. Uh, you see, God's love is a very, in a sense, a detached person. Any of you are nurses, you can't go crazy about a very patient. You can't pour yourself out. You, you kill yourself. You poured yourself into the needs of every patient. You had to be detached. 
if you're a doctor handling 55 suffering, 55 suffering people in a day, you can't suffer totally with everyone, can you? As a certain attachment, your service is to do the best for them. But there may be a certain attachment about it. You can't let it too far into their distresses and pains. You can do it. And God's like that in a way. So we get it where the, in the early days there oh, must be very much involved in it. That's of course why sympathy doesn't do it, compassion does. That's the difference between sympathy and compassion. Sympathy, oh that dear person, I must let him know that I, 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 I must sympathize with their suffering. No, don't sympathize with their suffering. Sympathize with the fact that it's the purpose of God. Sympathize with them in praising God that God's in the suffering. Then they'll probably kick you back when they do that one. That's compassion, you're doing the best for them. To make them find that they, they find their solution in their sufferings when they find the purpose of God in their sufferings when they praise God in their sufferings then they find then they find the uh, the the, uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, the the real way in which uh, 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 suffering takes its right place in their lives so if you sympathize oh the poor thing only all you do is increase the suffering so in the self the self love will increase the suffering oh the poor thing true suffering will be detached to, to say, compassion say how can I help that person say God meant that it's horrible but God meant it praise God if you begin to believe God you'll find peace and ruin it'll come and flow in your hearts and you'll find a purpose in the whole thing and you'll find some, some new thing some new expression of God's come through the whole thing how can I help them do that you're detached a bit so because so, you're out for real love because real love is, is, is for them when they can find their God adjustment of course That's their, then, then you've given them real love so this new quality of detached love, uh, it, 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 it is, it's, it's the real love, it doesn't, often, it doesn't always appear to be real love to the self, to the flesh. So flesh may not like it too much. The husband or wife or children or parents may not like it too well. They like to have you all over them. They say that you don't, you don't, you, they don't like you being all over God. That's too fanatical. And yet in that all over God you've got the perfect love for them. And you're doing the perfect thing for them. So actually, the, as I said, the joke or the trick, whatever you call it in this thing is, you, you, God forces you to the fight of the alone to the alone. Until somehow something's happened and this is all, uh, uh, that's why, that's why I, I, I like to pass on to people, psalmists say, psalmists say wonderful things. The psalmist in some way says, so deeper in the above than anybody else. You find great gems through the psalms. But one simple one I like to pass on is that one in, in Psalm 73, I think, um, which says what I'm saying. 73 verse 25. I like to put it sometimes in books, but now I have to sign my name. Um, Psalm 73, 25. Whom have I in heaven but thee? And there is none upon earth that I desire beside thee. Huh? Oh, that's God only. Whom have I in heaven with thee? But there's none on earth that I desire beside thee. And God will call you to say it. You see, it is in you, it is in you, but sometimes things have to slap off a bit that uh, sort of seem to be in the way. God does that. Now that's what we talked about of the, the detachment of discipleship. And we said, don't you touch it, don't go back to law works and try and do it. And don't hope to become that. If you say you are a third, you're a third level person, if you recognize this person in his, in his perfect nature, which is other love, is you now. You're saying, you may not feel the least, but you say, it's this, in his perfect nature, isn't just a you lover, he's another lover. And somewhere or other, you're always going to find his fulfillment in being something by which he repeats himself to other people. So you take that even mentally first, maybe. Before you can take it, maybe you take it by faith. Like you take Revelation 20 mentally first. You say, well, I crucified with Christ. Uh, Christ is in me. It may not be much to you. It didn't mean much to me for two years. I took it two years and said it two years for it. And the Holy Spirit said it back to me. But I didn't go back on my saying it. Once I'd done that in the heart of Africa in the village and signed that up and little, they put it on a bit of postcards and I, here I, I, they buried with Christ. I never went back on that. He didn't confirm it to me for two years. So the conscience didn't come back to me for two years. But I didn't go back and think, that's not what I've got to have. That's what I am. That's what I am. That's what I am. As I said, I am, uh, uh, in time for me, he said, and you are. <laughs> and that came from him. So in the same thing, if you're moving, if you catch it, it depends on the level of your, of your seeing. If you're seeing what I'm talking about, and of course we are those, those who have, in the main, passed through stage two. So we are those who are seeing stage three. 
If you're seeing stage three, you say you are what you may not necessarily feel it. And when you read this, the championship area we read yesterday, you hate not to, you may well, uh, no, you say, that's what I am. Uh, I, that, uh, that, uh, that old self-grab of them, which is, which is what I hate. You didn't hate them, you hated the self-grab, really, which is Satan's grab in you. That's been replaced by God's grab in you, which is God, God, uh, for them. So you now become a lover for them, but in a that sense. Your, your total love is God insofar as God's given you to, to have, have, uh, have some participation in a father and a mother and a wife and a family and houses and that. Okay, okay, this is wonderful. And I, here they, I'm, I'm for them too. And uh, I'm for the best for them uh, and the best use of them. Uh, that's why when you get into stuff, you, you give, up, give up nothing that is taken from you. You're totally selfish. Don't give up one single thing till you've got to. He'll, he'll get it from you. So don't you give up any money or gifts and grab a tight as all, all you can. <laughs> and and he'll, he'll take what he likes then. And you, because your heart is different now, he'll take it as he, as he needs it. And he, or very often won't take it. He'll may, he merely make you use it, that's all. Make you use it. So you get all off the idea, I've got to give up everything. Give up nothing, and you've, then you've given up everything. <laughs> when the pot you give them everything, you give up nothing, and then it, 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 it just fits in, fits in, fits in. But there lies underneath it, that basis, if he does take the lot, I've got him. If I do lose my job and my salary and my, and, and my, and my, my pensions and, and, and my, my, my security, oh, I don't know what's that anyhow. What's a fiddling, what a few securities? I've got, I've got, uh, I've got the, 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 whole, the whole thing. Uh, uh, or the whole, whole money of the universe is mine if God's mine and I just cash in for a little more so, so, so we have that as your background so I'm saying again if you are saying you're a third person you're saying you are a detached person you're not going by your feelings uh, you're going by what the Bible says about therefore you know the spirit says it's true of you and that you therefore have passed from the discipleship level. The discipleship level really pay, takes, pass, pa, pa, takes place really in the moving over into the second level, really. It's all mixed up in, uh, uh, in that. Uh, um, and and you, you, you therefore, you take again uh, as fact that kind of level we read in 1 Corinthians 4, uh, when you're a fool, when they're wise. And you're weak when they're strong. This is the church, the church. This is the church who thinks they're strong, not the world. And the third church thinks it's pretty so, so good, pretty secure, pretty respectable, uh, pretty sensible. And, when, when, and you're the fool when they're wise. And you're the weak when they're strong. And you're the spies when they're honorable. Uh, and, and, until you are odd that, uh, uh, that extreme statement Paul made, filth of the world off, off sky of all things for his sake that's at a positive level now again you say that your self can't like that see your outer body can't like that your soul you know, no, that's all <coughs> um, what you like in the spirit your, your soul will come to like alright and your body will come to like they're part of you so you say no, I, I, um, I, 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 I choose to be in, uh, and, and recognize myself as being what you say is the is the outer appearance of the, of the apostle, who weak and despised and poor and and, uh, and all the rest of it, uh, and having nothing, possessing all things. You get back what Paul says: having nothing, possessing all things. As poor, yet many, making many rich. As poor, yet making many rich. So it's, we, we're we're settling into that um, as uh, the. Uh, uh, a description of the, of the quality of the, the uh, yes, the, the quality of, the, of this new level of being. Um, uh, now. Um, think the profoundest word in the scripture used uh, of what we are in this condition is an intercessor. Uh, you can use other phrases as I say uh, 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 intercession is the quality of the priest. Uh, we read yesterday he has an unchangeable spirit and he has an unchangeable priesthood in Romans 
in Hebrew 7, for the ever lives to make intercession. He can able to save the other us, for he enables, for he ever lives uh, to make intercession for us. Um, so we, 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 we introduce that word as the real final meaning of you in your life. So we're considering now what the, what it, what it means when the Bible says we're intercessors. The, um, The term is used um, of us humans in Isaiah 59, um, 16. And God saw there was no man and wondered there was no intercessor. Um, that's where he made his own son the intercessor. Therefore, his arm brought salvation unto him. That's through the Savior. His righteousness, it's, 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 uh, it sustained him. Uh, so God, um, wondering, uh, wondering where, where there are intercessors. At that time, he, okay, there, there were others. Also, but this was the main one, was, was his son was the intercessor. The intercessor in the unchangeable priesthood. Um, we're told he fulfilled his intercession on Azar 53 the process of fulfillment or shall we say which led to the fulfillment was 53 um, the last verse of 53 of Azar therefore I will divide him a portion with the great this is the fulfillment that's the gaining of it he should divide the spoil with the strong because he has poured out his soul unto death and was numbered with the transgressors and bare the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. For, for, for the transgressors. So here's the intercessor in his basic, in his, in, in the, his, uh, his basic activity by which he gained. So you see, it says the first, previous verse, therefore he shall see the travel of his soul and shall be satisfied. The travel of his soul, of course, was that millions, millions should, uh, should become uh, his, um, uh, his members of his body, expressing himself. He shall see, uh, he, that's gaining it, he gained it. Therefore I'll divide him a portion with the, with the greatest, that's the gaining of it. Uh, the price he paid to gain it is this, this one. He poured out his soul on the death, bare the sin of many, made intercession for the transgressors. So there's the intercessor in his calling, and there's the intercessor in his uh, 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 fulfillment of it. Um, and then we read in Hebrews 7, the intercessor. In, in his completion, or we see here the travel of his soul, when he's able to save the uttermost and the come unto God by him, that's the one in Hebrews, in Hebrews 7. Um, uh, we are the expressors of intercession now by Romans 8. Romans 8 says the intercessor is the Holy Spirit, uh, God in God for others. He's the intercessor of the universe, of course he is. And he, uh, uh, so it says, it says, you see, of, of, of Jesus, that he is intercessor by the Spirit, because it says in Romans, in, uh, I'm looking, uh, jumping over there, in Hebrews 9, it says, who through the eternal Spirit offered himself as part of the God. So the, the fulfillment of, of the intercession by his death took place uh, through the eternal Spirit. Uh, brought him through that um, uh, necessary way of intercession. <coughs> and Romans 8 tells us how he's intercessor by us now. 8.20, we don't, we, we uh, help our infirmities and so on. Um, we don't know what to pray for as we ought. Um, uh, but the Spirit himself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. 
and he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the spirit because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God now don't waste our time thinking he's making intercession for us he's got us he's making intercession for his, his fulfilled purposes by us of course those groanings in the spirit aren't groanings for me yeah, they're settled in a, the inner groaning for his, for, his, for his world purposes in the world for salvation in the world so don't mistake when he says he makes intercession for us here meaning he's interceding that we may, we may become something we have, that's been settled we have become something by Romans 8 already the, having become something by Romans 8 he's now saying this is the person now fulfilling the ultimate purpose the, the third level of purpose by us and it includes inner groanings inner longings and inner, inner desires we long to see happen uh, they can't be uttered. And when you, when you know this type, you look at yourself, you find there are areas of groanings, areas of longing, long for pur long pur longing purposes uh, that continue in you. Perhaps the greatest is, how can the world get saved? How can we see the millions go to hell? What's the Lord mean for the millions of Muslims, the millions of admiration? Millions of animists, millions of uh, and millions of so-called uh, millions of Americans, and millions of British. That that may very well be, as it is to me, a real groaning. You don't utter it; it's deep down all the time. How can it be? What's oh, what part can I take in this? This man in this world that so many of them seem groaning on into a lofty turn. That's that's a groaning which can't be uttered. Or it may take may take more local forms. So the intercession is the intercessor expressing his intercessory purposes inwardly and outwardly by us. So we're the outer intercessors of whom the real intercession always the Holy Spirit. Like Jesus is the outer intercessor but the Bible says it was through the Spirit he bought himself that spot. The Spirit in Jesus himself was the, was the intercessor, the eternal intercessor. Now, uh, how then uh, does this uh, 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 how is this intercession if you like in action in us and by what form does the spirit operate this intercession by us uh, now the first is a, a, a conscious commission that's a tremendous fact a conscious commission is eat you up. Now, if I understand the right, the highest in the Bible is to have some com commission which has got you. There's a major commission. Inside the major commission, you may find temporary minor ones. I've had several. But there's a major one. And eat you up. Jesus said, For this cause was I born. For this cause came I into the world, as I might bear witness to the truth. The truth was to reveal God as, we, as he was. John 7 prayer he said I have manifested thy, thy nature to the world I have manifested you to the world forever the world not the kind of God you are by me now now he, he came with one purpose that, that the world the world might, might uh, uh, know who this 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 this, uh, uh, father, this, this uh, lover father is and might move into the into the family relationship which they've been created the one purpose uh, Paul had one purpose. He was the apostle to the Gentiles. But I'm, I, 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 I've got to get those, 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 uh, those who never heard, they've got to hear. You, Peter, can look after the Jews. I've got to get out and get out and get out. And he died with, he died with his, his technical, technical plans ever fulfilled. He said he went to Rome to, that they, they might pass by them unto Spain. There's no evidence he ever went to Spain. Uh, if he'd gone to Spain, he might have gone out to England, and he might have taken ship with some some shipmaster of Portugal and Spain and discovered America with Columbus, maybe, and taken the Gospels of America, you never know. But you see what I mean? On and on and on, he had a purpose which he died in, in, in a vast fulfillment, but not a complete fulfillment. He died in faith, not having a feast, received the completion of promises, but he received a mighty big slice of the cake, because we're the size. Millions of the Gentiles are the other, other size. So, you see, now I'm saying this to you, God can do it. Uh, I, I, if I use a person, my own personal illustration. I've, I've just mentioned Paul, 
uh, uh, mention Jesus. Um, of course, Moses had it. He'd got to get the people out of, the, out of Egypt into the land. He never, for certain reason, didn't do the final step. But he did the preparation. He made them a people to come. They had to have the law. They had to have the tabernacle. The law of the grace had to have that prepared for Jesus to come. And Jesus could only reveal himself through people who already were prepared. And he had this set purpose all his life. And he had to give his life to live in the wilderness when he might have been a Prince Royal in the, in the palace. Uh, and uh, he uh, uh, had to give, uh, get them to have, uh, share the manna and the water and all these things. Forty years, forty years to get this thing through. He only had one purpose. The Holy Ghost purposes should, be, uh, should take place in the a family who had already been formed uh, in, in Egypt um, should, should take their real form now as God's people which had to be under the, under, under the law and under grace uh, and, and get him into the land where they could become an establishment. That he didn't do in the end. Joshua did that. So each one. See, Abraham, Abraham had a purpose. God said, through, through you, the world to be blessed. And to be blessed because you ought to have a son and there's going to be a family. And that family is going to be in the land. That wasn't his main line. Those are incidental uh, uh, intercessions. Incidental intercessions that Abraham had once he promised for land. Even incidentally, the intercession he had was a son. The proof he wasn't the son was he, he was going to kill his son to rise again. That's the proof he wasn't his son. He saw the eternal spirit fulfilling the eternal purpose and creating the, 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 the eternal family. So he had, he had temporary purposes in giving uh, the promise of the land uh, in which he lived as, lived as a intense so, because he wasn't interested in property. So he just all those days a great great sheep owner. He didn't live, he just lived in a tent all his life. I, I, I'm not interested in the property. It's just an agency from which the, the, the saviour of the world can come. It says he rejoiced to see his day. He had the concept the saviour of the world is going to come and then the saviour of the world is going to gather the body into being. So he saw that and then he saw he got through for the sun after many, many travails. But even then he, he slew the sun again because he wasn't for the sun. He took the sun up to burn him as a sacrifice. Because he counted that God was able to raise him from the dead. What a, what a statement. And if he slew him, he must rise again because God, God said through that son's promise would come the family to whom the son would come. So it always said that Abraham didn't see a land. He said he saw a city which had foundations, a heavenly city. So right, that man's his purpose was millions in the New Jews, millions of millions of, of people of God's presence, God lovers, God being, being God, uh, God persons, millions of this this the, the, the fulfilled family. He saw, him, he saw it. He lived with that. He lived with that. His temporary, temporary conditions where to get a land, the promise of the land, and they get a son, and then kill the son to see him rise again by faith. And a few, a few misses and hits on way, as we all have, a few hits and misses on way, which is part of our humanity. But you see what I mean? So I'm saying, men with a purpose. Now I wonder, I've had to have a purpose. You sometimes have a, maybe part of a preparation. I, speaking of personal why I had preparation because I had a zeal for God as a young man when I went to the, entered into World War I I'd been saved and made a first education and had a zeal for Christ and souls so I went to the British Army to witness for Christ and as always you, you pay the intercessors price even though I hardly knew intercession in those days I was a fused for motion the colonel didn't like me witnessing for Christ he wanted me to be a better British soldier so, he, he, so I cost, it cost me it but you see, I witnessed for Christ. I witnessed, I witnessed the officer. I witnessed the men. Before we went there was the final fight in Passchendaele. I gathered men at 2.30 a.m. with the guns roaring. I told them for the last time that I hope that Jesus Christ would be the Savior. My own, few hours after, my own batman next to me shot to the heart. Most of my men shot to the heart. By God's grace, I got hit in the leg and escaped. God's ways. But, uh, so I had a purpose. Now, out of that purpose that conditioned me suddenly to be brought in touch with a man who had a world purpose. Now, I was lying wounded in the hospital after four years of war. I got wounded on that, on that battle. And uh, somebody threw this little magazine on my bed about this man, Stud, who sold out a, sold out a big cricket career and a, well, a, well, a, 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 a fortune inherited from his father and put it all into God's work. And there he lived to see the work at the gospel. There he was out in the heart of Africa taking his share in a worldwide crusade. I saw it. I got it. 
I'm a call into a world crusade. I'm involved that every person who hasn't heard the gospel should hear the gospel. I got it, or it got me. I think there's a certain condition, you see, certain preparation. I was prepared by faithful and often rather painful witnessing in my army days, among the, the, both the soldiers and the officers. Uh, I seeing very little fruit, I didn't know much about fruit. Even my methods are a bit clear, queer. A, a little, a, 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 a Christian who I thought a little older and wiser, uh, very few Christians I met in those days, he said, if you smoke a bit and drink a bit, that'll make a link. So I begged, uh, uh, so I be uh, gaily uh, uh, smoked a cigarette and drank my beer as I preached the gospel. In the end, I find you preach a better gospel without, gospel without beer or cigarettes. Please turn your tape over. There'd be a way to get a little friendship with my, with my men and the officers. And, and I did speak the gospel. We had 400 of them together before we went to France, Africa, uh, before the France first time. Uh, a man came in and gave the gospel to them and so on. We did something. But rather stumblingly, the only way I thought I could witness in those days, we were training, England's always raining anyhow, so it's always, we live in rain. And we lived, there's a place called Salisbury Plain, where we had put our tents up, where we were training for France. And the, the soldiers would be eight or ten in the tent. Uh, it was against the law to gamble. Well, when the rain, where uh, I was an officer in charge of that area there, um, when the rain was on, across these fellows inside, you heard the rattle of money going. You know, gambling. So I'd open the tent flap, sit there, hi, you fellows, I know something better than gambling, Jesus Christ. I shut the flap, 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 flap and go on. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only witness I knew, but he was a real witness, you see. <laughs> so, so, no wonder the colonel didn't like me. <laughs> um, but you see what I mean? Anyway, this, I'm getting the fact that was a preparation. And the right moment came, I got the call. And so, uh, in my case, that's been my life's calling. Uh, it... Uh, it, 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 uh, shall, shall we say, in, uh, or in, in large or varied in form, because for many years that calling was, uh, after myself being in Africa, to help open, with, we're open now through this faith, with 40 different fields. So we planted centers of witness in India and Indonesia and Java, Sumatra and Borneo and Japan and Thailand and well, Nigeria and Ghana and Senegal, all around the world. Uh, our fellow workers planted uh, and today of course there are, there are living believers who are going out giving the gospel and so on and then this uh, literature crusade started up which now has about 150 centers all around the world books are pouring out the point to Christ now I had that but all the time in, in it I, uh, my heart was to see uh, walking Christ was to see uh, fulfilled Christians the, so that the second half of the, the, those two ministries I, I was mixed up with both of them I read to you yesterday that two ministries in Colossians 1 when Paul had the ministry to take the gospel of the world they said he had the second ministry of the church which, for which they persecuted him and to fulfill that ministry which is Christ in you so the first ministry as it was, was, was to be Christ to them Christ for them and the second ministry is Christ in them and so I had that and the, so that that has moved on, moved on for me into this, this area now the same purpose. I still live for a world purpose. My world purpose now is this one. To help God's people find who they fully are. Christ operating in their human forms. And that's, that's now uh, the, the commission that eats, eats me up. Now I'm saying that to you. Um, because... Uh, uh, I, I already know, of course, uh, that we have those among us here eaten up. Now that, remember, being eaten up like that doesn't, isn't referring to the, what material condition you're in. It depends what, what's the, what's the, what's the grab of your purpose in life? What's your heart? Uh, and so we have those like that. I mean, God's grand Bill Volkman. He's a businessman. He's a businessman related now to getting everything he can into getting the witness out through Union Life magazine and other people may have this replacement. Re re and you come along like, like, uh, like John and Linda in, in, in uh, Louisville, they build their whole home, it's geared. The main point is to be an agency by which people can, f can find Christ to fall in them. And others are here. We mentioned Laurie here with the tapes, or Betty here with her thing here, or uh, Sylvia and others we know, uh, uh, and uh, uh, Evelyn Anderson and others who were grabbed by this thing. I'm speaking for you, which I have no right to do. Uh, but I mean by that there is a commission. Now you may remain just a housewife, 
in a home, but something's got you. You're part of something. You're part of this thing. And your life is geared to this thing. This thing is that Christ can repeat himself in human lives or uh, in the body of Christ all over the world. So, um, uh, uh, I'm uh, um, putting that uh, to you uh, uh, as the, 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 the basic meaning uh, for first, first, first meaning of, of uh, intercession or being an intercessor uh, that the Holy Spirit uh, uh, gives you your special commission and the highest privilege is if he can give you a, a, a total commission that grab the whole of you now there are temporary commissions Within, within, as I say, I had one temporary commission in preparing me for the full commission. I've had other commissions since then. I went, to, I went up to college, and God gave me a commission to witness that's side of the IVF, the Divinity Christian Fellowship. That was a, 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 a specialised commission inside the main one. And then later on, as I say, I had the other other uh, areas of faith in my in my missionary life to fulfil the, the, the missionary cause. Uh, uh, so, but there, within the main commission, you may have many local commissions, but you're a main commission. Now, I just throw it out to you. If I am sent right, that is the high calling Paul had. So, uh, he had pressed towards the mark for the prize of the high calling in Christ Jesus. The high calling was he was the apostle to the Gentiles. And he was laying his life down, <laughs> which he surely did, as the Gentiles. Uh, he used the expression. It's very interesting uh, the drive that's behind the intercession. In Ephesians, um, Ephesians 3, Paul says um, that uh, uh, verse 8, Unto me, of less than the least of all saints, is this grace given, that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ, and to make all men see. What is the first thing that he make them? That's a drive. He had to go on, had to go on, had to go on. His point, he could, his calling was tramping. So Maybe different, your way, be, yours, your, yours may be at the kitchen. But behind the kitchen is this. See, the, uh, um, the man I, I, I learned so much about intercession. If you want to learn intercession in action, get that Reese Howes book. Yeah. And there's a new one just coming out. There are so many demands made in this country for what does intercession mean? That uh, uh, a, a woman who is about about my age, who started in early life side by side with Reese Howells 40, 50 year, 40 years ago when he was called to start this college through which the missionaries could get out of the world and so on. Uh, and she tried the, the school for missionary children. And she was always very deep in the spirit, understood his teachings and so on all the time. Doris Ruskell's her name. So I got her a year ago and she was sort of finishing uh, her school teaching and it's like a new life to her. And she spent the year putting together what she saw and learned in the life of Reese Howells, not so much the life now, but the principles that come out of that life. What are the principles of intercession? And she's bringing out the book, it should come out by Christmas time, or somewhere around, called Reese Howells Explains Intercession. And that may be a great value to many people who are seeking, seeking what the re- is, is the meaning of this, 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 this uh, word we use, intercession. But I'm thinking now, uh, there that they gave themselves, that the God, I can't go into details, to see the world to be free for the gospel. See, they were there in the days when Hitler and so on were, were grabbing the world, and, and, and Stalin and so on grabbing the world. And they would tie the world in knots, the world wouldn't get the gospel. He said the world to have the gospel. He wrote a book, God will destroy those men, Hitler and Mussolini, those days. And I don't doubt to go into the details of the ridiculous in those days. Because, of course, in those days, Russia was an ally, not a, not, not a, you know, not a war, not an enemy of, of, of Germany. Russia was allied to Germany. Germany had seized Europe. Germany, Hitler was on the point of seizing Britain. America wasn't anything at all. Pearl Harbor hadn't happened. So you went in it. Oh, things look bad. And he said, this is a meditation. The world is to be free and God will destroy those men. You wrote a book on that line. Now... Um, I'm only saying now, I won't go into more details, um, uh, the, uh, 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 he, 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 he spoke that word, uh, it's all in that book, he spoke the word of faith on which has come to pass. Well today of course it's fantastic, far beyond what he, what he ever imagined. The world's amazingly open to the gospel. 
It's amazing that the uprisings have gone through all these lands through the national today. Uh, uh, witnessing Indians, witnessing Africans, witnessing Indonesian, witnessing China, Japanese, all as well, besides ourselves, the oh, world's alive, witness. In J Russia, the same, in China, the same. So you, you see, you, you see that he happened. What I mean is this, together with him, there are about 30 gay that lay their lives on the altar, and the world should be free to the gospel as you get out to the gospel. They're still there, and several of them gave up marriage. So they're about my age now. And they've lived there together, some do the cooking, some will do typing, some will do house cleaning, and men and women, some will, they've got very lovely gardens in that place that God gave them by faith, some keep the gardens, they're manual people, but they're part of an intercessory group by whom thousands of dollars is going to the mission fields, and by faith, they're the agency of the world remains, which it is today, and is, 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 is in all its freedom getting the gospel. That's intercession. So they're mostly hidden peoples. You just meet them, they're like white-haired people like I am today. They've given their lives day by day by day, in the morning meetings, prayers and intercessions and so on, and their work. This is what they live for. They're an age in which the, the world, the God, God gets the, the, the uh, gospel to the world. So I'll put that to you. I'll say to you again, if I'm correct, the highest privilege God can give you, which he has given, I would say, perhaps to quite a number of you here. Maybe some of you will be able to say so in, the, in these days. You, you're, you're set in a, 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 a world, uh, uh, a total commission. Of course, we'd say our total commission is geared to this, what we call human life. Uh, to get this message out in these forms that God's given us to get it out, so that people may have Christ walking in them as he's in you. But you have a sense, I'm in this, and God's put me in this. Your part may be this, that's a detail. Your part may be this or that's the other. That's the point. You're part of the agency in which he's... We say, uh, see, that's what we're saying in your life. We're saying, if we're right, if the real secret is Christ replaced, replaced Satan in you, a free, free Christ in a free self, we say, the church doesn't know that. I don't know where it is preached. I don't know what churches preach it. I think they do. I don't know what books show it. Nearly all of them come back, back some other law. You've got to work it out, and uh, nearly all do. So we're, we say, as far as we know, we're almost unique. Uh, thank God if there are, there are others here and there, because the, the name doesn't matter. It's, it's, the, it's the, uh, the, the principle that matters. Um, but, uh, so, you see, uh, uh, so I say a good many of us here um, uh, have, have, have been caught here. Uh, like I say, Bill Bogman uh, 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 said he couldn't do anything else. That we've seen this, this is a world, uh, this is a life's commission for me. To take a share and see if this happens. We see it happening. We see there must be uh, Ni Ni Nigerian uh, folks who know, and uh, Congolese who know, and Ta Japanese who know, and Indians who know, and Taiwanese who know, and uh, and all, some who like us will spark up and say we know this and we, be we begin to spread the ways around us so we see God implanting in the whole church of Christ worldwide uh, spots of light of people who uh, have become Noahs I like to use the word a simple word Noah you know who you are I prefer to call people co-Noahs and co spheres knowing is called seeing sign well, that's a simple term I, I use so you see what I mean maybe maybe others are going to be called that way <laughs> this becomes the drive of your life then. Everything else just has to fit into that. Um, so there are, w there are ways in which the Spirit gives um, uh, the life commission. Um, and other, th other things may fit in uh, here and there in, in, in within that commission. Um, It certainly is possible um, to, to say to the Lord, well, um, uh, it would be, a, uh, I would count it a great privilege if uh, 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 I could be one in whom you've been part of that, that, that vision, that commission could be. You can't say that to the Lord. Um, So then I'm saying that I have, uh, that inside the, if you have the larger commission, inside the larger commission you have uh, 
um, uh, 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 what, what you might call temporary ones uh, that may 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 be may be uh, in, in in the domestic problem, maybe husband wife problem, maybe children, maybe business affairs, maybe maybe the church you're related to, maybe some of yours local local commissions. intercession uh, is, is, your, is the cost. You'll die for it. You've got to die some way because the whole principle is life can only, this, this new life can only come out of death in the old. It has to be. See, the world's got geared to a self, self-operating on, 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 the, on the, the wrong level, on Satan's level. Uh, the intercessor has to participate in a dying uh, co- a cooperative dying uh, uh, for, uh, we have had our own die uh, dying for other people now uh, which can produce, produce that, uh, that, that, the, the resurrection life in them see resurrection life can come, only comes through death and death means uh, a variety of forms of suffering uh, out of which there will be a dying and in the tension of the death comes, comes the faith of the life see suffering puts tension into you put attention to your faith and you, you move into resurrection faith because you, because you suffer that's why the Bible always, always links, links the word suffering and glory you have glory where you suffer when you understand it you see the suffering in the glory you see the glory in the suffering you don't talk suffering you talk glory but there's always suffering there the uh, uh, The three main scriptures on that one are uh, in Colossians 1, I've already read them previously in another relation, verse 24, who now rejoice in my sufferings for you, rejoice in suffering for you, fill up that which is behind the afflictions of Christ in my flesh for his body's sake which is the church. Well, have I made a minister? Well, have I made a minister? Is this this is this calling he had uh, uh, to the Gentiles, and then inside the Gentiles to bring to to, to produce uh, 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 Christ walking in human forms in in the in among the believers? That's the, that's the, the fulfilling of the ministry. He therefore coupled this the twofold ministry, which he went out to the Gentiles and then built up the Gentiles themselves might be um, uh, Christ-filled people. And for that he suffers. The uh, the key statement is the one that Jesus made in John twelve twenty four. Perhaps that's the key of all. Uh, he made it himself. He made it, made 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 it of us when we are co Christ, co saviors. John twelve twenty four. Um, uh, verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall in the ground and die, it abides alone. If it die, it brings forth much fruit. So, if our life is to be an outreach for other people, it dies. By itself, it just uh, it, it's a, um, uh, it abides alone. If, if, the, if the Spirit is fulfilling its outreach by us, uh, it, it, we die, and then out of the, de- the, the, the uh, corn that's been sown in the ground comes the, comes the harvest which the world eats. The corn doesn't eat it, the world eats it. The fruit comes up. Um, so th- that's how Jesus uh, put the principle for himself and for us. Uh, and Paul repeated it in the, in the Colossians statement and the daily experience of it is 2 Corinthians 4 
which is a key scripture. 2 Corinthians 4, 7 is where it says, We have this treasure earth and vessels, that the excellence of the, excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. We are troubled in every side, yet not distressed. So the, 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 the price is a trouble. You know how to turn it uh, out of... Uh, um, so it doesn't bother that. We haven't touched that yet. You're, you're troubled, but not distressed. You're perplexed, but not in despair. You have the perplexity. You have the trouble. You have the persecution. Persecution, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. So you're knocked about and knocked about. And there, there is the area where there's, where there's experienced suffering. There's a way out. We're not discussing it at the moment. There's a way out, which he mentions there. And he puts it in, in full terms. He says, what this means is we're bearing about the body the dying of the Lord Jesus. That the life of Jesus might be manifest in our body. That there can't be the, the life coming out to other people unless there's the death in us as co-saviors. And then he uh, uh, takes it further, verse 11. But we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake. That the life of Jesus, that's the second area we haven't touched on, might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. So then, death works in us, but life in you. And uh, suffer, uh, fall to the ground and die like a grain of wheat. Detachment would mean you uh, weren't involved, wouldn't it? No. No. You are involved again. You are detached from an over an overuse of love. The old life. You come back to be involved in love. You are involved. This level is uh, uh, justification. Unification with God, identification with people. And in the people you suffer. Oh yes, you come back to that. Um, now, how, how best can we get hold of that? Uh, many of you know it, but to, to recognize it to be so. Now as I say, I, I, it was stupid using little personal things for some way. When I witnessed in the army, I did suffer. He wouldn't promote me. Well, we're ambitious young men, we wanted, he wouldn't do it. I suffered. When I witnessed for Christ in the university, I uh, was strongly witnessing, I had this call to Africa, and the Holy Spirit said, Drop your, don't, get, don't get your graduation, drop your graduation, and in England you can't repeat, you can't go back later and repeat it. Drop your graduation, don't get to all the pride of being a bachelor, and master in art, and the, all this university stuff, go to the mission field. And that's a death for me. People said, don't do that. Only way, I only had a little time more to go, don't do that. Well, I did do it. But uh, in doing, in that death, before I left, I, I therefore was leaving, uh, 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 in the middle of, I uh, living at Christmas time, when I, when I, I, should, I wasn't going to continue through next year as I should do. And uh, just before I left the university at Christmas time, I had uh, yes, another week or two left, uh, up in December, and the Holy Spirit came me, says, this is your last days here. Now I said, you've got, well, by that time we had uh, very small days, and those of you had about, uh, about uh, maybe fi fi 50, uh, believers, men believers in the university. Nowadays there are hundreds. Um, just a few. Uh, he said, that's not the point. You've made lots of contacts around the people who are unsaved. Get to them. Don't miss one. Go to their rooms. Knock at their doors. Get at them. And tell them where they're going. Pull no punches. If they go to hell, tell them they go to hell. If they're Christians who are obviously defeated, tell them they must have sinned in their life. and better get it right. Now, I, God possessed me. I did it. And I went round. Well, in those days... They were, we were all, nearly all were, were, were ex-army men. So we went, we went to, uh, young kid students. We'd come back to finish our university career after war, so we mostly were been ex this and ex that in the army, and uh, were pretty sophisticated. I went round them, and so even to see anybody come for Christ in those days, about 16 came, for, came out for Christ, different ways. Now the point is this, when this happened, the Holy Spirit, the, the, my friends, my Christian friends said, let's get together and hear, this is what, we want to hear good news. We want to hear good news. So we gathered to hear about these different ones who came out for Christ and gave the lives of Christ and so on, which, as I say, was quite rare in those days. As I did so, the Holy Spirit suddenly said to me, every university in the world should have this. 
Every university in Britain should have this, every university in the world should have witnessing centres where they get the word of God, they build the word of God, they witness for Christ and win people to Christ. As far as I knew, I didn't know any other university except ours that was a Cambridge. You had it at that time in England. I saw the vision. And I got two of our men together, two of our students, and said, will you join me in forming an inter-varsity conference in London? Cambridge is about 200 miles from London. Uh, we'd form an inter-varsity conference on, in Christ around Christmas, and gather together some men from a few other universities, and begin to get together a conference that catches on to of having a witness in all the universities. Now, after that, it's born the inter-varsity Christian fellowship. Inter-varsity Christian fellowship in thousands of colleges around the world today. Do you see what I have, you mean? You die, I remain dead for that. I've never got this, this marvellous degree from the university. I've, I've died to the reputation, but my goodness, what have I got? Uh, colleges, all thousands, hundreds of colleges around the Christian world have their, their centres of witness and light, light today. They call them, often call them intervarsity Christian fellowships over in this country. And they call them with different names in different terms. But you see what I mean? There always comes something gets you and you die. Uh, when I had to come on, I came home from Africa. Uh, because uh, the mission was very small in those days. Um, but the vision was the world. And our father, our father died. We had to come home. And my wife and I had to come home. I mean, this was the thing, but uh, money was so short at that time, is the day of the, oppression, the, of the depression. Actually, that month, we had um, uh, $500 for 35 missions for a whole month. That's, uh, not a week, a month. All we had for a whole month for 35 missions out in Africa was about $8 each a month. That's pretty low level, even in Africa where things are a bit cheaper. At bottom. Now the law, the principle of our mission at that time was if people came home from the field, it cost a little more to live in England or America, it does in Congo, so you take a little more money out of the, t out of the till, out of the money that's coming in. We never appeal for funds, whatever funds are there, take a little more out of those funds, put, put, uh, first for the, value, for the help of the people at home, give the rest of the field. Holy Spirit says, can you do that? When they only, uh, only $8, of course you couldn't. He says, why don't you start touching the promises? They're out there giving their lives to get Africans to Christ. They won't bother about finances and so on. You, they just take what, what comes out to them. You're at home at the, at the home end where you're going to begin to, to, to develop, the, to see, see the work of people, work has gone to many, many countries, not only Congo. Why don't you say, why don't you never take, your, never take mission funds again? Why don't you step out on the point and say, God will provide personally for us uh, uh, without, the, without the mission. Well, uh, it was a bit of a sacrifice in those days. See what I mean? We had to do that. So one time we had a whole month just eating lentils. That's all we ever had. Till somebody sent the potatoes. We were thankful for that. <laughs> uh, we had a whole week. We had no, no money in the house at all. But by that time about ten of us. We had no money in the house at all. So we decided we had uh, the eating room was downstairs in the basement. So we had two or three floors in this house in London. And there were about ten or fifteen of us maybe. I can't remember at that time. We said, well, we'll meet in the prayer room upstairs and praise the Lord anyhow, we've got the living bread, even if we haven't got the material bread. Each time at mealtime, we'll, we'll, wait up, we'll, we'll meet upstairs and praise the Lord. We had one old lady in the home. She was uh, uh, the father of our mission, C.T. Studd. He came from a very wealthy family. And his, his mother lived in Park Lane, London, the uh, old couple, the, the parents, because Studd sold out all he had for Jesus. And so she had a lady's maid, as they had in those days. And this was the old lady's maid, now about 75 years of age, who pretended to be a cynic, and said she didn't believe in God and all that, and she, we, she had a room downstairs in our basement, near, near where the dining room was. But we all told her how she, we had keen young Christian, young fellows preparing for this mission. She always called them her hallelujah boys. She loved her boys. Her heart was for God, really. She pretended it wasn't. She loved her, she loved her hallelujah boys. Well, uh, there we were, we met that first day upstairs, nothing. No, no bread, no butter, no cheese, no nothing in the home. Nothing in our pockets. And just as we began to say we'd praise the Lord, the bell rang from downstairs. We trooped downstairs. There on the table was tea and bread and butter and cheese. Uh, every day for a week the bell rang three times a day. And every day we were fools there. We always said, well, you say daily bread, at least we can praise some cheese as well anyhow. That's all we had. And then on the seventh day, suddenly a farmer heard of us somewhere and came up with a great load of potatoes. So the next week we get living on potatoes. But what I mean, what I mean, you, you don't, you know, look back on those things. Fun, but you see, there's something on your level. God puts you at the bottom out of that Pentecost face. 
After that comes a faithful bride today where uh, we're 1,500 missionaries all over the world. See, there's a Christian Ninja Crusade sold about $7 million worth of literature alone last year. I mean, it's a different day, day to day. Do you see what I mean? And so, in each, each level, when, when, you, when you have the commission, somewhere along the line comes something in which you have a death. And after that comes life. Uh, our great founder, Stard, um, he, was there, he, uh, he went out uh, with this, he was already nearing 60, he had bad, bad health, he'd been in India and Africa and he had bad health, and the doctor said if you go you die, <laughs> of course his answer was, that's I've been for, going for a long time to die for Jesus, you may be sure I'm going, <laughs> keep going, keep me chance to die for Jesus, you couldn't stop men like that, he went, penetrated the heart of Africa, in those days you had to go three months down the Nile River and then 500 miles by foot into the forest, in the Congo, they were, they were long before planes and uh, that kind of thing he went there but my point is this um, his wife was a semi invalid with a, I had a half a day on her bed with her heart and she loved the Lord too she didn't want him to go because the doctor said if you go south of Khartoum in those days Khartoum was the furthest south city in, down in Sudan now you go a thousand miles beyond that to the source of the Nile and five hundred miles inland to the forest that's where we went and where Stud went um, and she didn't want to go. She's a precious woman, which you know. She thought what could happen. Now, he said, I've always, he always had a wonderful oneness. Wonderful oneness with his wife. But he said, if God says to me, even if my wife's against me, I must go. And so he said, I must go. Uh, and as he left England, um, uh, the day he left England, some business friends was, uh, went to call on him. And they said, uh, called him Charlie, Charlie Stubb. They said... Charlie, we've got to say something to you which isn't very pleasant to say. We don't think you're even Christian leaving your wife in that condition. We don't think you're even Christian. He sat down and wrote a motto, which is our motto ever since. If Jesus Christ be God and died for me, no sacrifice can be too great for me to make for him. And he went. Now he went to Africa uh, and uh, arrived, uh, I joined him two, three years later. He went at that time, penetrated into Africa, and got to the mouth of the border of the Congo. He was stuck there for, um, for, uh, for crossing, a river, crossing a lake. One of those big lakes, Lake Edward, one of those big lakes there. He was stuck in a tent. He got a, a, heavy, a heavy dose of fever. And when you got a heavy dose of fever, you, you anyhow think you're about to die, whether you are or not. Um, he had one young man with him, my brother-in-law was with him, uh, it was about 20. And, and there they were, the two little tents, waiting for the, the, for the, for the um, porters and so on, to help them to get across the, 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 the lake. And he called him in and said to him, Alfred, he says, I don't think I should be alive in the morning. In the morning. He says, this has got me. And we hadn't got many remedies in those days. We just put, put, took aspirin and sweated it under blankets. That's about all we did. We had any fever in those days. Um, uh, and so he said, I don't know what I'll do. And he said to the young man, well, if I've gone the morning, what do you do? And that loyal young man said he'd go forward. I don't know how he could go forward. He left the, left the tent. The, the, those scriptures in James 5 suddenly came to stunt. If any man's sick, he calls the end of the church. Let him uh, anoint him with oil, pray over him in the name of the Lord, anoint him with oil, pray and faith will save the sick. So stunt, who was with his bump of humor, called back Alfred and left the tent. I, right, Alfred, come back. I hereby appoint you elder of the church of Jesus Christ, 20 years of age. Uh, now he said, don't be particular. The Bible didn't say what kind of oil. We've got some oil in the kerosene lamp. The only the only one they got some oil. Get some oil out of the kerosene lamp and anoint me. So he's anointed with oil out of the kerosene lamp. Next morning he was all right. And so he wrote back to his wife, who had us this heart trouble on her bed half a day. I got that letter. He called us here. Dear silly, don't trust those old doctors, those human doctors. They're no good anyhow. Trust your doctor Jesus and get up as I have. And she did. And she became a flame of fire at home getting young men to go and join us one of them. Well, we're 1,500 a day. We were, there were just two. But uh, you know what happened? For, they saw each other for two weeks in 16 years. That's the price. See, she remained at home, busy getting the, the young people to get, get out to the mission field. He'd found his, what he called his black gold, his harvest of, of, of Africans. Yeah, there he was in the forest among all these Africans, bringing Jesus. He was so busy with the Africans in, in Congo, She's so busy getting young men to go out and women to join him, and they had only time for two weeks and 16 years. I was there for those two weeks, 
uh, we, we, she came to Africa, this, this was ten years afterwards, toward the, the end of his life, when um, she, came, she came to Africa on a visit to, to Egypt. A friend, they were doing the friend there. By that time, telegraph had come through. We get telegraph, in the early, early days, of course, you only get runners. Now we get telegraph through. And through a telegraph, she said to him, I mean, she, couldn't I come and, and be with you? Well, she was stouter and older, and I knew her. She's my mother-in-law, so I knew her. And I knew it wouldn't be very wise at that age, uh, and the change of climate, and very rough conditions, very rough conditions those days. We, I mean, we hadn't got where we had today. So it didn't seem wise, but we young men around Stud said, oh, let her come. You know how young, young men are sentimental, and young women. Let her come. All right, he said, if you go and fetch her. So he sent me all the way back to Africa to fetch her in. That wasn't an easy task, either, and I did. I brought the stout lady in, and through certain, certain conditions which a, a son-in-law can be in, <laughs> with a mother-in-law, <laughs> to get her in. Uh, of course, the famous occasion, I'm just saying this, because she had a way of saying things, too. Uh, there, the, the, the Africans crowded in. They didn't know he had a wife, except he had two daughters. That's the only proof they had a wife. They'd never seen a wife. And it did a tremendous thing for the Africans. Africans, oh, now we see what he meant that God gave his son. You gave your wife to take Jesus to us. Oh, we see love now. God gave his son like you're giving your wife. So they had a great impression on the Africans. About 3,000 of them gathered in a great concourse on that day. I was there with them. <laughs> it was a historic moment. Because here were these two on the platform, little mud platform, stood with a tall, strong, he'd been a great cricketer, tall, strong, six foot, three or four man. But he'd become like a skeleton, very thin, like an old prophet, with a long beard. So he was a very thin stud and a very stout Mrs. Stud. Um, and you know what she said to him? She said, by interpretation, you people, you know why he came, came and I didn't, don't you? You couldn't eat him, but you might eat me. <laughs> they got that one. <laughs> Um, that's only incidental. But she only remained, she only remained two weeks. And uh, quite right, she went home. Do you see what I mean? Out of that comes an enormous harvest. You see, there are deaths. You can't tell what death type, type they take. But uh, God put you somewhere through death. And out of the attention of the death comes the, comes the resurrection faith by which the thing happens. So have I said that completely enough? But, uh, now, uh, you see, get this plain. Death doesn't mean something, something uh, 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 um, uh, dramatic. As I told you, some of those precious women who were with, with Reese House, their death had been in the kitchen for 30 years. <laughs> death doesn't mean, it means you've given the life, and it's, 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 it's got, you know, in certain conditions because God's, God... Uh, has put you in those conditions and they're, 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 the, they're the price you're paying for the, for the, for the obsession. So you understand um, the, the, uh, there's the commission uh, and there's the, the, the cost, this cost. Now, what I mean is you, you begin to regard all your life as uh, uh, joined to this purpose uh, uh, which is to be fulfilled. And you see your life, all that happens to you, whatever form it takes, it may be pressure, because you see him in a new light, as a part of the purpose by which God's going to fulfill, his, fulfill, fulfill the, 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 the commission. That's why this is the moment where uh, your whole attitude changes, long line Dorothy says here, uh, uh, changes when you have caught the... the, the the, the fullness of the, of the fact that God means everything. Some of us discussed that yesterday. God means everything. Now, see, as you, as you proceed with this thing, you're going to come against pressures and difficulties and problems and antagonisms. Um, and you may lose your reputation. You may feel you've got to give yourself, give yourself to people uh, to win them. Uh, you have to take risks in giving yourself. Your, your, your soul, the whole spirit, soul, and body is is given that, that God may use that to, to win people. Um, incidentally, uh, I don't think Paige is here, but some of you would like to meet with Paige. She can tell you a little about how you give your whole self to win a person and how you may lose your reputation in giving it. How important, when you understand your whole self is God's self, it's coming through your soul and your body as well as you, and you, you, you give yourself whatever way he tells you to give yourself that he may win whatever you're told to win. This is a local intercession. See, there's a major intercession, 
uh, like pages with a sword in the major intercession of the union life. Local intercession, some person comes through and becomes a new person in Christ. There are local intercessions. And some of you might be interested to get a round page and hear how a Lord led her in the local giving of herself. Uh, to fulfil the intercession of somebody else who can become a, 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 a strategic uh, expression of Christ whose life can be a, really told for Christ and lose reputation en route most of these men lose reputation Spud lost reputation I can't go into detail Reese Howard lose reputation uh, it's a price the way I have to pay my own precious mission uh, the Lord brought, made me a kind of architect Spud followed it and I kind of was led to build the thing up to the condition it is now they are lovely people but they think we go too far in saying Christ talks about innocence. And they don't like the union life. You see, uh, uh, when you're out for Christ, uh, I think God means, means kind of clay feet to show up, to test people out. Everybody has clay feet. It means your personal Christ, something about which you don't like, maybe other people don't like. I think you'll find everybody. Oh, they're for Christ. When you work closer, there's something about who you don't like. Some attitude, some action, some way you don't like. Now, if, if you're a person who sees God, a person, you see the, the great thing and don't bother too much about the small things. If you're a person who hasn't seen the glory, you see the small things and make an excuse for kicking, kicking the great things out. And I find people who fight you in your life because they've got some little senses they don't like, some little phrase they don't like, and they, they turn the whole ma magazine back because there's something you don't like. They are judging you in life. You love judging them. Because if they'd caught the glory, oh, they'd see the glory that rings through the, the magazine and Christ in people's lives, they wouldn't bother too much to find what funny little thing said there or other. I think you'll find God test everybody out. I've always said in our crusade, I had the, I had the responsibility of preparing young, these, you see, we had the 1500 of us, preparing young crusaders from uh, going out to all, all around the world today in different fields. I always used to say, you will have a second baptism into the crusade. And the second baptism will come when there are things you don't really like. You've got a shock. Those missions aren't quite what you thought they were. This is quite that speech out you thought they ought to be. This is kind of, kind of that, that kind of product, kind, kind of uh, uh, concept, fruit you ought to be. It'll test you out. If your calling was to lay your life down to get the gospel paid, you go through. And you just bypass the small thing because you're geared to the large thing. And if you hasn't got a real calling, you run away on the, on the small things.